Good afternoon. Well, good morning. Put on where you're at. Morning and afternoon to everybody. On this Saturday, April the 20th, 2024, it's time for a pop-up. Let's get it in. We're going to help you command your day. And uh, a little prayer, a little prophecy, a little therapy, a little teaching today. I'm super excited, as I have been for the last, well, I'm always excited, because uh, I'm always excited about the word. I'm always excited about pointing to people. But I'm super excited, because we've been on this thing for the last couple of days about crazy and uh, I want to take it another further today. Come on in on, on every platform. <clears throat> Speak to me as you come in. Let me know where you're watching from and share. And once you share, type share it in the comments. Twister, you already got the right energy. Let's go crazy. All right, come on, let's go. And if you haven't been with us for the last couple of pop-ups, then you, you may not fully understand why we're using that. And I'm going to give you a quick recap. We're going to jump into this thing today because uh, this morning during my time of uh, uh, prayer and reflection and this morning uh, and literally I always pray to God, what is it? What, are you, what is it? What are you saying to me? What are you saying to the people connected to me? Hey, Boston. Uh, and he said, I'm about to give you a crazy idea. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to give you a crazy idea. But before I jump into this pop up today on every platform, speak to me. Let me know where you're watching from and share when you share, people can say, Miami, Florida, good to see you. Florida, good to see you. South Africa, welcome. Uh, Ohio, good to see you. McDonough, Georgia, good to see you. North Florida, hey, uh, anybody in Atlanta, guys, I I'll have an update for you here very soon uh, about when we'll begin our Sunday services in Atlanta because we're going to do a new location in that area. And so I have an update for you very soon. Um, all I can tell you is this, is to keep praying and God, we and God has got some great stuff that he's making happen for us and some great things that God is doing behind the scenes. Sometimes, and I need you to hear me clearly, sometimes what God will do <clears throat> is when he's going to make something amazing is that um, he'll do a lot of work behind the scenes. Can you put that in the comments, BTS? Behind the scenes before it's ever seen on the stage, before it's ever presented. And so great things are happening. In fact, all I'll say is this, is uh, we're waiting on a piece of information, waiting, 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 and uh, and I got some great information yesterday, so we're excited about that. BTS, he's working behind the scenes, all right? But the beauty of us being a hybrid church is really in Denver, in Atlanta, Timbuktu, South Africa, Anchorage, Alaska, uh, St. Louis, uh, Aurora, Dallas, Texas, wherever you're at, you can be connected. That's the beauty of uh, what God has uh, been building in and through Harvest thousands of people connected and this year alone guys can you believe this over 900 people have given their lives to the lord so far to become christians this year our goal is 2400 <clears throat> we're, we're going to see god exceed that goal last year our goal was 2023 and god exceeded that goal 3136 people came to the lord so god is with us god is working god is moving come on i love it connected and glad you're connected but let me have everybody if you don't have the app Text Harvest to 55498. So you open a text. The phone number is 55498. You're going to text the word Harvest, and uh, and you'll be able to get connected that way. All right. Hey, listen, um, I just need somebody to actually type that over on IG, type that over on TikTok. Thank you, Keanu. You are on it. Thank you so much. I appreciate that because on, on TikTok, that pin doesn't stay up. So thank you so much for that. I appreciate you. We got 60 seconds. Uh, so listen, um, the last couple of days, well, actually, let me back up. Before I do that, let's do church announcements. Uh, today's announcements are as follows. Number one, don't forget, guys, the spring feasts are about to begin. There are four major spring feasts in the Bible, three major fall feasts. The Bible teaches that these should be honored forever. These should be honored forever. Number one is why we continue to honor them today. Jesus is the fulfillment, but we continue to honor them, all right? Uh, he is our Passover lamb. He is our first fruit. All right. He is our unleavened bread. There was no error. There was no sin found in him. And he is our Pentecost, our Shavuot, our celebration. He's all of that. But the Bible says we continue to honor these to this day. So for those of you unfamiliar with the feast, if you've never heard of it, you're like, what is this? I've taught on it already. But literally, you can go and you'll get an email later today for those of you that are connected. You'll get an email that points you to a bunch of previous messages. Uh, and uh, you can also just go to our YouTube channel, go to our app, our website, type in Feast, and then you can see I've taught tons of messages about the Feast, why we still honor them. The Bible teaches that those are to be honored. So in Harvest, we don't honor things like Lent and Ash Wednesday, stuff like that. Nothing against people who do. That stuff's just not scripture. What is scripture are the seven feasts. Drop a seven in the comments, and that's why we honor them. The Bible says that they should be honored forever. So <clears throat> Passover begins at the beginning of this week. So what are we doing? Let me remind you, it's a water-only fast. Can you just put that? We're fasting. A water-only fast 
Sunday night at 6 p.m. Uh, local time until Monday night at 6 p.m. local time, all right? So biblically, a day actually begins the night before. A day begins the night before. So if you read Genesis, it says in the night and the morning were the first day, and the night and the this were the first, second day, and so on. So that's why we're doing it that way. It's called Erev Pesach, which means we are welcoming the Pesach. Pesach is the Hebrew word for Passover. We are welcoming the Passover. And what do these feasts mean, guys? There are four letters, and I need you to know these. If you don't know nothing else about these feasts, you got to know this. SFFM. Can you put that in the comments? SFFM. Sudden Fast Forward Movement. That is what the feasts represent. And so we're going to welcome the feast that way. And uh, <clears throat> and so I'll likely pop up during that time of fast. Of course, we pray Monday nights at 7 Mountain, 9 Eastern. But uh, I'll likely pop up uh, during that time uh, as we begin that fast so that uh, we cover several things in prayer. We're going to cover you. We're going to cover everything connected to you. We're going to cover me. We're going to cover harvest. We're going to cover a whole lot. And we're going to believe that this spring, se this spring feast season is not like any other feast season. We're going to believe that this feast season, um, that we see results we've never seen before. You know what we're going to believe for? We're about to believe for some crazy results. Can you drop crazy? 6 p.m. local time. 6 p.m. local time. 6 p.m. So that's going to be different for every person, right? So if you're in Denver, well, again, it's just going to be different for every person. Whatever your local time is, 6 p.m. Sunday until 6 p.m., whatever your local time is on Monday, right? We're going to believe for some crazy results. Why would you do that, Bishop? Why in the world would you believe for crazy results during this time? Well, I've been showing you this scripture in the last few pop-ups, John 2, 23. It says, <clears throat> now during the feast of the Passover, um, there were many signs and miracles and people believed in his name. During the feast of the Passover, there were many signs and miracles and people believed in his name. Now, I want you to pay close attention to what I'm about to say. Um, when this happens, I haven't read you verse 22, because this is going to shout you from this verse, and then we're going to get into today's pop-up. But let me get everybody, every platform, like the video, tell me where you're watching from, and share. When you share, people get saved. The Bible says this, um, after he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed both in the scriptures and what Jesus had said. Then when you go to the next verse, it says, now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover feast, many believed in his name. And they saw the signs and the miracles that he was doing. Now, why is that important? Why should that shout you? It's because we've got two things going on here. That while Jesus, uh, Jesus was the Passover lamb, he was crucified during Passover. When Jesus was crucified, if I listen, when Jesus was crucified and going through his worst moment, he was doing his craziest and best miracles. Did you hear what I just said? When Jesus was do in his worst moment, when Jesus was, y'all don't worry about that. We already, already blocked him. He's gone. I got him, Kim. He's out. <laughs> right. My, my blocking game. Whenever you see me reach for the phone, I'm blocking. Right. We just going to keep it moving. We ain't even going to acknowledge the enemy. We just going to shut it down, keep it moving. When Jesus was in his most uh, uh, challenging moment, he did his craziest miracles. I want you to put this in the comments. Challenges equal crazy. Challenges equal crazy. Because <clears throat> while he's in his most challenging moment, he, he is doing his craziest miracles, his craziest signs. What does that tell you and I? That whenever we are in challenging moments, we're about to see God do some of his craziest miracles, okay? But let me push this thing, and let's take this thing even further. Then the second revelation is this. So Jesus is, uh, for three days and three nights, he is in, uh, he literally goes to hell because he takes on the sins of all humanity. So he becomes every nasty, ratchet, crazy, jacked up, every sin that was done, that was being done, or that would be done, he was paying the price for. Literally, it was transferred to him. And we see this um, from the practice of the Levitical priesthood, that they would literally lay their hands on a lamb, and they would confess the sin of the people over that lamb, <clears throat> then that lamb would be slain. That's why Jesus had to die that way, right? So the sin could be transferred. You got the app? Awesome, Quincy. So check this out. So what ends up happening, Jesus takes on the sin uh, of the world. So for three days, three nights, he literally has to pay the penalty. He has to pay the penalty 
for what was done. And because of that, watch me, in him paying the penalty, he goes and he gets the keys. What keys, Bishop? The keys of authority in the earth that Adam gave up in Genesis. Adam gave up this authority. Jesus goes and gets this authority. And that's why Colossians says he makes a public spectacle of the enemy. Well, when Jesus raises from the dead, it's on a day, which is which is one of those spring feasts called the day of first fruits. Put first fruits in the comments. First fruits, first fruits. He gets up on the day of first fruits or the feast of first fruits. This is all going on. So here's how it goes. Passover begins. Then you immediately begin something called the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Leaven means error. And I've already talked about this, so you got to go back and look at Wednesday's Bible study, Sunday's message, and our app or website. Uh, leaven means error or sin. Jesus had no error. Jesus had no sin. He was perfect. His body, watch me, even though they broke bones in the bodies of the other two men that were crucified with Jesus, they never broke his bone. He's unleavened bread. During that feast, you get to something called the Feast of First Fruits. This is the day that Jesus rises. This is what the world calls Easter Sunday or Resurrection Sunday. It's actually coming up this month. It really wasn't last month. The calendars didn't align. What does the principle of first fruits say? That what is ever in the first, it's in the rest. So anything, look at me, anything Jesus does, I want you to put this in the comments and say this, I can do it too. I can do it too. This is why the scripture says, as he is, so are we in the world, which means anything I see Jesus do, I can do. This is why Jesus even said things like this, greater works than these, greater works than these that I have done, you will do. Not greater in quality, because what's greater than resurrecting somebody from the dead? Greater in quantity. He said, there's going to be more of you and you're going to have more time to do it. I'm trying to encourage somebody this Saturday morning because there's some things you're like, God, I can't do it. I can't do it. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. God, I can't deal with this. Yes, you can. God, this is too much. No, it's not. God, I'll never overcome it. Yes, you can. As the principle of first fruit says that whatever is in the first, it is in the rest too. Okay. And then 50 days from all of that, you have what is called Shavuot or Pentecost. We're not going to hit that today. Why is this important? Because in John 2, 23, the Bible says when Jesus is in his most challenging moment, he does his craziest miracles. Then once he's resurrected, John 2, 23 says that even after his challenging moment, he's still doing his most crazy miracles, which means a challenge is about to unlock something crazy for you. A challenge is about to unlock something crazy for you. Now you just do the key emoji if there's, uh, and put that in the comments. Because for many of you, the door that you needed open, the lock was called, watch me, the, 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 the key was called a challenge. The door that you were praying that God opened, the key to that door was called a challenge. And I want to encourage somebody on this Saturday morning. Yes, you've dealt with some challenges. Yes, you've dealt with some frustrating things. Yes, you've been like, God, what is up with this? Well, that was the key. You better hear me. That was the key to unlock the door to your crazy. Now, if you haven't been with me for the last few days, Paul, I'm like, why is he talking about crazy? Well, because crazy, um, the apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter five says, if it seems like we're crazy, it's to bring glory to God. God is looking for some crazy folk. And let me give you the definition, marked by thought or action that lacks reason. If you keep doing reasonable things, you're gonna get reasonable results. You keep doing regular things, you're going to get regular results. Number two, it means impractical. Our God is impractical. Um, it doesn't make sense to take two fish and five loaves of bread. Why not just go get more food? Because we serve a God that specializes in doing crazy things. Can you put that in the comments? Let's go crazy. Let's go crazy. Number three, it means erratic. And what does erratic mean? Erratic means not regular, not uniform. That's the type of God we serve. Jesus was sitting there spitting and making mud and putting on people's eyes. That's not, that's erratic. That doesn't make sense. It's erratic to prepare a fish, uh, which literally I told him this before. It wasn't a whale. It was a shark that the Lord prepared to go get Jonah uh, and get Jonah, watch me, from his rebellion and take him exactly to the place he was supposed to be. I'm going to tell somebody that thing that feels like it's crushing you. It's actually about to get you to the right place at the right time, at the right place at the right time. Because that thing, watch me, that's erratic. Lord, why not just like do it different? Because we serve a God 
that specializes in crazy. Let's go. Then it means unusual, not the regular, not the norm. This is the type of God that if you study your Bible, that we see. And here's a powerful scripture. I need you to hear this. It's a powerful scripture. I did my real, one of my reels yesterday about this. And here's what it says, Matthew 18, 18. And I want you to listen very carefully. Matthew 18, 18 says this. It says that whatever you allow in the earth, God will allow in heaven. But whatever you don't allow, God won't allow. So for some, you keep getting regular because you keep doing regular. You keep getting usual because you keep doing usual. You keep getting uh, 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 basic because you keep doing basic. But I just want to see if there's anybody on this Saturday morning pop-up that can say, I'm ready for something crazy. If that's you, drop a five in the comments. I'm, I'm ready for something crazy. I'm ready for something that blows my mind. I'm ready for something that when I look at this, I'm like, there's no other explanation. I'm looking for, I want something crazy. I don't want regular, I don't want usual. What's the point of having a supernatural God and you're gonna live a natural life? What's the point? What is the point? And for some of you, watch me, you gotta hear me. This is why God has been getting you out of your comfort zone because comfort and crazy can't exist in the same place. Comfort and crazy cannot exist in the same place. I'm gonna say it a third time. Comfort and crazy cannot exist in the same place. This is why he's got you out of your comfort zone doing things you're normally not used to, doing it in ways you're normally not used to doing it. And I've given you several examples. I showed you the men whose friend uh, was paralyzed and there was a line to get in, there was no way. So they started digging a hole in the roof. And when God saw what they did, the Bible says Jesus, he looked at their faith and healed their friend. They did something, come on, put it in the comments, crazy. I talked about the woman with the issue of blood. After 12 years, 144 months of disappointment, not getting results, not seeing things work the way that she wanted to do, she did something crazy. She left her house, found him. Then when she found him, it was a bunch of people around him. So she had to drop it low. She got low to go grab the hem of his garment. That's crazy. We talked about Joshua. Joshua is fighting his enemies. And while he's fighting his enemies, the sun's going down. And he literally says to the Lord, Lord, let the sun stand still and let the moon uh, remain in its place. Now, here's the truth. The, the planets revolve in this galaxy revolve around the sun. So when he says, let the sun stand still, what he was really saying is, Lord, let the earth stand still, which, listen to me, is more complicated. But God knew what he meant, and God says, I like that. That's crazy. God is in the crazy folk. And based on the definitions I just gave you, those four definitions I gave you, God is in the crazy. Drop a fire in the comments if your faith is being stirred up right now. God is in the crazy. Then I began to talk to you uh, about uh, the centurion man yesterday. He is a, he's a Roman, uh, uh, essentially a high-ranking Roman officer in the Roman military. And this man, this man says, hey, Jesus, uh, can you, can, I need you to heal my servant. Jesus says, I'm coming to your house. This man, Sharice, does something crazy. After Jesus says, I'm going to come to your house, he says, hey, 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 Lord, I'm not worthy for you to come in my house. And basically, since this is my servant, listen carefully, since this is my servant, um, the truth is the house ain't really presentable right now because he ain't been able to get stuff done. So uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I tell you what, I'm a man in authority and I tell soldiers, a centurion means he had a hundred soldiers under his command. Uh, a centurion, century, centurion. He had a hundred soldiers under his command. He says, hey, God, um, I'm used to telling people what to do and they do it. He said, so if it works for me, I think it'll work for you. He says, just speak a word. Come on, y'all, put that in the comments. Speak, Lord. Just give me a word, Linda. And if you give me a word, he'll be healed. The Bible says Jesus marveled. Jesus was amazed at the man's faith. He said, I like this guy. He's crazy. He's crazy. And the Bible says God gave him exactly what he asked for. I'm trying to tell you today that whatever you allow, God will allow. Whatever you don't allow, God won't allow. Which means sometimes you're sitting back waiting on, 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 on something and God is like, do something crazy. 
do something crazy. Okay, Peter, and I got one more I got one more high level example. Let me go jump into the pop up. Let me get everybody that liked the video. Tell me where you're watching from and share before I get to this last one. We're almost done. So uh, first before the last is this one. So uh, <laughs> listen, listen, come on. Wait a minute. Let me just do a room check real fast. If, if this is stirring your faith, I just want you to type speak Lord in the comments. Speak Lord in the comments. If this is stirring your faith, speak Lord in the comments. Speak Lord. Okay. So here's another one. Peter, you're going to walk on water. Now, um, Peter says, Jesus, if it's you, bid me come. Have me to come to you. He says, come on. He did something crazy. Look at me, guys. He literally asked God a crazy question. And for some of you, you keep going. I'm going to say something crazy. You keep going to God looking for answers. What if God wants you to begin asking him some questions? Oh, my. What do you mean? He says, Lord, if it's you, bid me come. What if you started saying, hey, God, um, if you want me to do blank, do blank. What if? What if, what if God was like, do you have any crazy ideas? And I said this to you yesterday. The miracle is his responsibility. The method is yours. The miracle is on him. See, the miracle is what you can't do for yourself. But the method, the method's on you. Which brings me to today's pop-up. And I want to speak this over your life. God's about to give you some crazy ideas. God is going to give you some crazy ideas. Father, I pray for every person watching this pop up today and most will who will watch it later on on replay. I pray, I pray that you give some crazy ideas. Heaven, we're about to be in the spring feast. What does that mean? Open heaven. What does that mean? No interference, no impediment. Nothing will be blocking. Nothing will be in the way. I pray, God, for some crazy ideas to be released in Jesus' name. And I pray that these crazy ideas would blow our mind. I pray that these crazy ideas would send us results like we've never seen before. We need some crazy ideas. Can you just tell the Lord, say, I'm open, I'm open, I'm open, I'm open, I'm open, I'm open. So let me, let me give you an example of this. In 2 Kings chapter 4, it's only a few verses. The Bible says that there is a woman and uh, this woman she is a, a widow of a member of the group of prophets. So let me just set it up and then we're going to, then I want to speak because some of you, I'm going to have you to begin type certain things. I'm going to speak to just a few of you and pray over you, a few of you specifically. In 2 Kings chapter 4, it says, One day the widow of a member of the group of prophets came to Elisha and cried out, My husband who served you is dead, and you know he feared the Lord, but now our creditors come threatening to take my two sons as slaves. If I look at me, so let's look at her situation. Number one, her husband's dead. Her husband's dead. Her husband is gone. And in the Hebrew culture, the man was the primary provider, which essentially means if you didn't have a husband, it was very likely you were going to live destitute and you were going to struggle because in that culture, at that time, in that part of the world, um, it was it was the man was the main provider, which means, number one, she she's got a relationship issue. Type that in the comments. Because now she's by herself and she's used to having somebody. Let that be a revelation for every person watching. Sometimes God needs you to be in a situation where you learn what you can do on your own. And I'm not just talking about dating relationships and marital relationships. Sometimes God needs you to be in a situation where you figure out what you can do on your own. Where you figure out what you can do without a team. Oh, where you figure out what you could do without a bunch of people around you. In other words, isolation is going to produce some inspiration. You're so used to having somebody around you. What if God said, I just need you. Hey, hey I just need you by yourself right now. I just need you. I know you normally go with your friends. I just need you to just chill right now. I, I, just, I know you're used to always having somebody around. I just need you to chill right now. So she's got a relationship issue. Because she's used to having somebody there and he's not there. Oh, God, but it's about to get crazy. Number two, number two, she's got a provision. Uh, uh, let's, actually, let's use all ours. She's got a revenue issue. Drop that in the comments. I'm all alliterated. She's got a revenue issue. She's got a relationship issue and a revenue issue. Because now, where's the money coming from? There's no money coming in. So her income stops. 
And now she's got to live off of whatever's left. And the Bible makes it clear that he left her with some debt. She's got a revenue issue. She's got a relationship issue. She's got a revenue issue. Are you still here? But it's about to get crazy. She's got a relationship issue. She's got a revenue issue. Let's go further. All right, guys, do me a favor. Like the video, tell me where you're watching from and share. And notice what she does. When she goes to Elisha, Elisha is the man of God. He takes over for the prophet Elijah. And she says, my husband who served you is dead. And you know he feared the Lord. But a creditor has come threatening to take my sons as slaves. You ready? You ready? So now, not only relationship issue, not only a revenue issue, listen very carefully. Uh, now she's, uh, I don't want to say this. Now she's got a, uh, uh, she's got a relative issue because they're about to come take her sons. They're about to come take her sons. They literally, it's like a collection company calling you and saying, we're going to do this, or you get the notice of the mail, we're going to garnish your wages, or we're going to levy your bank account, or whatever, something like that. You got it? So now she's got a relative issue because they're about to come take her sons. They're about to come take her sons. They are about to come take her sons. I'm going to use all ours. They're about to come take her sons. Okay? And she goes to Elisha. Look at me. She goes to him expecting him to fix it for her. And sometimes you can go to somebody expecting somebody to fix your issue. And God says, you don't need, listen to me, you don't need an individual to fix your issue. You need an idea to fix your issue. I'm going to back that thing up. And when you get that revelation, drop a fire in the comments. You don't need an individual to think, well, if so-and-so would just do this, if so-and-so would just do this, if Bishop would do this, if so-and-so would do this, if so-and-so would do that, if the president would do this, if the CEO would do this, mm-mm, mm-mm. You, you, don't, you don't need an individual sometimes. Sometimes what you need is an idea. I need you to hit me. I need you to put this in the comments. I need an idea. And I need a crazy idea at that. I need an idea. Come on, you better come on. You got to reimagine it, right? I, she needs an idea. She needs an idea. So watch what happens. Verse 2. Um. NLT says it a little nicer than New King James. I'm going to read you what New King James says for verse 2. So, actually, let's go King James. Uh, Elisha said, what shall I do for you? All right? <laughs> let's, 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 let's go English Standard. Uh, English Standard, verse 2 says, what shall I do for you? Listen to New Living, how he says it. Uh, what can I do to help you? Elisha asked. For something she doesn't already have. She, he tells her to look for something she already has. Here's the next R. Here's what you need to do. You need, watch me, to recognize. You don't recognize what you already have. You keep thinking, I need all of these external things. He says, listen, no, baby girl, what do you already have in your house? What do you already have in your business? What do you, in other words, everything you need, you already have. You just don't recognize it. You don't recognize it. You keep thinking, if I get this, I'll be happy. No, what you need, you have. I need you to recognize what you have. It's just, what do you have in your house? Watch what she does. Because this is what most people have been doing right now. She says, nothing at all. Okay, nothing means what? Zero. Except a flask of olive oil. Shut your mouth. I don't mean it literally. I just mean just the point. She's basically saying, I don't have anything except this oil. What is she doing? She's playing herself cheap. What is she doing? She's acting like she's a cheeseburger when she's a Big Mac to all beef patty, special sauce, pickles, onions, whatever, however the rest of the thing goes. Notice what she does. She says, this is nothing. But the nothing, what you're calling nothing is everything. Oh, my God. Lord, please help everybody get this revelation today. What you're calling nothing is everything. What you're calling nothing is everything. Somebody said, I never had a big bag in my life. I haven't had one in 13 years. I haven't had fast food in 13 years. 13? No, 11 years. I haven't had 13, 11 years. Lettuce, cheese. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Look at me. What you're saying isn't much. God is like, baby, that's all you need. What you're saying is nothing. 
is everything. Can you put this in the comments? Nothing equals everything. <laughs> Come on. She said, I have nothing except this flask of oil. I have nothing except this degree. I have nothing except these kids. I have nothing except this car. I have nothing except this phone. I have nothing except my skills. I have nothing except what I've been through. See, you keep playing it small. You're sleeping on your own supply. Lord, wake us up so we're not sleeping on our own supply. I'm just about done, you all. Here we go. Uh, and Elisha said, watch what he does. Now, this is, this is the crazy part. She's already in debt. Oh, my God. She's already in debt, Vivian. She's already in debt, Valencia. And watch what he tells her to do. Here's the crazy part. See, this is why for many of you, to get some crazy results, you have to do something crazy because you keep doing regular rational stuff and regular rationals give you regular rational results. He said, go borrow as many empty jars as you can from friends and neighbors. Stop right there. In borrowing, the last thing I should be doing if I'm if she's in debt, I don't even want to say I'm in debt because I don't want to speak that over me. In borrowing, the last thing she should be doing if she's in debt, I want you to put this in the comments. Crazy idea. Shouldn't borrowing be the last thing you're thinking about? Like, shouldn't, okay, I'm going to go here. Shouldn't sewing on a credit card be the last thing you're doing if you're in credit card debt? This is crazy. Should, watch me. Shouldn't, shouldn't opening up be the last thing you do if you've just been betrayed? In other words, he's telling her to do the exact opposite of what her situation is. Because he's like, go borrow some more. What? What? Shouldn't having faith be the last thing you should do if you just got disappointment? Y'all are not talking to me today. This is crazy. This is crazy. Go borrow some jars. Watch me. And then you ain't for the borrow just from creditors. This is going to get personal. Go borrow from your friends and your neighbors. So now they're going to be up in your business. Uh-oh. Here's the, watch me. So now we got another problem. Because now he says, I'm going to need you to be real. I'm keeping with these R's. You got a relationship issue. You got a revenue issue. You got a relative issue. But now I'm going to need you to be real. He was like, some people about to be in your business and I need you not to care. Oh, my God. Some people are about to see that, show, that, that there's areas of your life you've not yet accomplished what you want to accomplish. And I need you not to care. You're about to do something crazy because you're so busy concerned about how it looks that you're not concerned about how it is. I need you to be real. Because they're going to say, now, baby, why are you borrowing all this stuff from me? What's going on? Did Leroy, he, where, where the money at? What's going on? In other words, listen, I, I ain't too proud to ask. In other words, here's the crazy idea. You cannot be arrogant now. You cannot be prideful. You cannot be too proud to say something. You cannot be too proud to say, you know what? I, I, it is what it is. Oh, God. If I'm talking to you today, 33 minutes into this pop-up, I'm just about done. There's only a couple of verses left. Drop a fire in the comments. Drop a fire in the comments. I can't be too proud to say, you know what? I need to schedule a session. I, I, need, I, need, to, I, I need some coaching. I, I need to get through this. I need to figure out how to navigate through this. And I don't know. I can't. You can't be too scared. Look at me. You can't be too scared to say, hey, maybe you need to get somebody to help you get your credit together. You can't be too scared to say, hey, I need you to give me some information. Can you help now? Can you walk me through this? Can you walk me through this? A crazy idea, y'all. Literally, let me tell you what happened. Um, so, um, of course, we've seen great growth in all ways and social media and all that. And, and I was getting frustrated because for a while, my Instagram was sitting at about 50,000 followers. I was getting frustrated. To be very honest. I was getting frustrated. I was like, God. So I just wouldn't even post. I was just like, oh, whatever. I don't care. I was getting super frustrated. And while I was getting frustrated, I, I was like, God, there's got to be a way to do this. 
So I would meet with companies and talk with companies and they had all these different ideas and plans. And so I was like, no, 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 no. I need this to be real. I need this to be organic. I need this stuff to be real. It needs to be real. And so anyway, the Holy Ghost said, uh, the Holy Ghost brought somebody before me. And so I was like, man, they're doing a great job. I said, what are they doing? What are they doing? So I literally said to somebody, I said, listen, hey, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? I said, because I need to reach more people. I said, what are you doing? He sat down. It, it, listen, it was the most simple thing. But he looked at me and said, the people's Bishop, Bishop Foreman. He said, Bishop Foreman, you know, and these are words he said. He's like, you know, you're Bishop Foreman. Everybody knows. I was like, listen, man, I need help to reach more people in this area. Listen, I was not too prideful. I'm not too prideful. You got to hear me. And for some of you, you're going to have to simply say, I need some help with that. It's working for you. So tell me, tell me what you know. Tell me what you know. And I said, listen, and I'll sow. I said, I don't just get ideas. I said, I'll, I will happily sow. And did. And so toward an event he was having. He said, I'll sow. I said, I just need it. I just said, I just need an idea. And he said, I'll just do this. I said, that's it. I said, that's it. I just said, that's it? He's like, that's it. I said, that's all. I said, that's all you're doing. He's like, yep. Yeah. See, look at me. I was trying to complicate it. And it was so simple. See, I pray right now that what you've been complicating, that God give you a crazy idea that's simple. That's simple. That's simple. That's simple. You complicating it. You're making it way too difficult. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Don't complicate it. Don't complicate it. Put that in the comments. Say, I won't complicate this. I won't complicate this. So we sat there and literally in a couple of minutes, he said, I said, well, shoot. I said, okay. And guess what I did? I immediately implemented. And then I remember I got on a plane to Chicago. I did a video. I got on a plane to Chicago. It was, it was one of the first, it was one of my first viral videos. Got on a plane to Chicago. I posted it. I was talking real low because I was in the boarding area. I was talking real low. I managed to get it posted right before I got on the plane. I got off the plane. I was like, whoa. And then I was like, this is crazy. I've never seen results like this. God gave me a, please put it in the comments, crazy idea. And so then I think that reel now has done like almost four or five million views or something like that. I, I don't know. I haven't looked at it in a long time. It's probably way more than that now. You got to hear me. He gave her this crazy idea. He says, um, verse four, then go into your house with your sons and shut the door behind you. Pour olive oil from your flask into the jars, setting each one aside when it's filled. Listen carefully. So she did as she was told. And her sons kept bringing her jars and she filled one after another. Soon every container was filled to the brim. Stop. Here's the crazy part. How many jars of oil did she have? One. What has she begun to fill? Jars. Crazy. Crazy. She said to her sons, bring me another jar. They said, mama, there ain't no, this is my version. Mama, there ain't no more jars. She says, there aren't any more, he told her. And the olive oil stopped flowing. In other words, everything she needed was in her house. He tells her, it's a crazy idea. I know you're in debt, but go borrow some more. I know it sounds crazy, but you're going to get out of debt by borrowing. What? It's crazy. I know this sounds crazy. He said, <clears throat> but I want you um, to go borrow some jars and start filling them with oil. Crazy. But ma'am, everything you need is in your house. You already have it. Put this in the comments. I have everything I need. I have everything I need. What you're calling nothing is everything. I got to wrap this up. So then here we get to the last piece. Verse seven, when she told the man of God what had happened, he said to her, now sell the olive oil. Shut up talking to me. Ma'am, you were in debt, worried about your sons being taken. You're about to become an entrepreneur. You're about to be a business owner. Look at me. Since they won't give you a job, you're going to create your own. I'm talking to somebody. Since they won't give you one, you're going to create one for yourself. Since they wouldn't give you one, because remember, in that culture, the, the man was the primary provider. So if a woman was a, a, a widow, if so a woman was a widow, it was virtually impossible for her to provide for her family. This is why you see, even with Elijah in 1 Kings 17, the widow woman, I'm going to make some sticks, some bread, and die, you know, all that. Me and my son are going to eat the cake and die. Because it was like, there's no way for this. Crazy idea, Teresa. Crazy idea, Teresa. 
He says, go sell the oil and pay your debts. And you and your son live on what's left. Look at me. He didn't make the debt disappear. He gave her a crazy idea to pay it off. He gave her a crazy idea to pay it off. See, this is defying reason. This is defying rational. Because what most of you think, well, how can a man of God just can give us some money? Because that ain't going to fix your problem, boo, because you're going to be back next month. I'm not doing that. How come they didn't take up a collection for it? So you want to know why sometimes you don't get uh, uh, crazy things to happen in your life? It's because you think that a person is responsible for your provision. No, ma'am. No, sir. A person is not responsible for your provision. You got to go to your God. He's your provider. So he'll give you a creative idea. He'll go, how can they just, how can they just start a GoFundMe for her? No, that's not what we're doing, ma'am. You need to learn how to never be here again. Because, ma'am, you're in this in 2 Kings 4, but you're never going to be here again. And I'm going to speak this over somebody's life. The situation you're in right now, if I'm talking to you, you put a praise in the comments once I say this. You ain't never going to be in this situation again. You're never going to be in this low spot again. You're never going to be in this depression again. You're never going to be in this anxiety again. You're not coming back to visit this temporary place again. You're never going to be in this again. If I'm talking to you, put a praise in the comments. If I'm not, don't say nothing. But you're never going to be in this again. So if I just give you money now, we're not fixing the problem. Because you're going to be back next month. You'll never be in this again. Can I give you one last piece? Let me give you one last piece. Let me give you one last piece. One last piece. Uh, he says to her, sell the olive oil and pay your debts. Question, 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 question. Who is she going to sell the oil to? If she's in a city and she borrowed from her friends and neighbors, who is she going to sell the oil to? Look at me. The same people that she just borrowed the jars from. June, Maria, who's she going to sell it to? The same people she just borrowed it from. Which means, starts Monday, which means, which means, listen to me, God says, you have an untapped supply around you because you are about to sell this oil to the people you bought the jars from. So watch me. You ready? Here's your shout. So how are they going to get their jar back? Because I'm about to sell them this oil that I put in the jar and they're going to get their jar back, but I'm going to get the money for the oil. You better come on here. <laughs> you better come on here. In other words, listen to me. In other words, she basically... <laughs> Not basically. She used their jar to fill it with oil. And then, but y'all remember back in the day, um, uh, and, and I just, I don't know that we ever did this, but, you know, the milk companies where they would deliver the milk and you put the empty jars on the front and then they go fill them and then bring you your jars back. Wait a minute if you remember that or something. I only know that because the place where I exercise a lot sometimes in Denver, um, depending on the time of day, they'll sit, they still send out the milk trucks. And when they send out the milk trucks, I'm like, oh my gosh, if people, this many people still get milk delivered like this? Y'all remember that? They still get milk. I mean, it's a ton of trucks. I, one day I was very concerned. I'm like, what are y'all doing? This feels like a little from scene from a movie or something. Still delivered. Check this out. In other words, God says, I'm going to give you such a crazy idea that the people who help you and you borrow their stuff are going to be willing to pay you for what you do with what you borrowed from them. Let me back it up and say it again. And if you get the revelation, drop a fire in the comments. Exactly. Royal Crest. You're going to borrow their stuff and then they're going to pay you for what you do with what you borrowed from them. Do you not know that's what banks do? Okay, let's make it real practical. And I got to wrap this up. Do you know that's all a bank does? Is a bank takes your money. They go and do stuff with your money that makes them more money. And then they give you some interest on your money. Do you not know that's the American bank? Actually, not just American. That's the, that's the world banking system. Drop a fire in the comments if you're catching it. Drop a fire in the comments if you're catching it. Now, I don't want to get into deep conversations about fiat and crypto. We're not getting all that. I'm just saying, that's what they do. You put your money in the bank. They take your money. They borrow your money to go use your money, to go make money with it. This is why I'm always about financial empowerment. Because look, let's, you got to be your own bank. Then 
they give you some interest off of the money they make. So if they can give you that much interest, so how much did they make? Depending on who you bank with. If they can give you 6%, how much did they make? Oh my God. <laughs> I'm here to tell you God's about to give you a crazy idea. It's going to be a crazy, it, it, people are going to be like, that's crazy. And you're going to be like, this is God. Last thing, can you put crazy equals God? <laughs> not, not that God is crazy, but God's going to give you some crazy ideas. But the truth is, based on the definitions, unusual. Our God's unusual, erratic. Our God, he has patterns, he has principles, but our God will do crazy things, impractical, marked by thought or actions that lack reason. This, 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 this is it. He's going to do something crazy. And for several of you, you're going to look at your life back on 4 2024. And you're going to be like, that's exactly what they do with your 401k and every other investment. So this is, so that's me. So think about it. Finance, fun, let's just go here real fast. Financial services is one of the highest people in that industry and companies in that industry make some of the highest profits. It's one of the top industries in the world. Well, where did they get this idea from? God, it's a crazy idea, right? Crazy idea, right? God said, go borrow their jars and then go sell them the oil back in the jars they gave you. You borrowed the jars from free. You borrowed the jars for free. But now you're going to make build a business off of borrowing their stuff for free. And they're going to pay you for the oil that you put in their jar, which you couldn't have poured without their jar. Y'all better hear me. Father, release some crazy ideas today in Jesus' name. How many of you, we're in 2 Kings chapter 4. How many of you, uh, you know you need some crazy ideas? Put the areas in your life you know you need some crazy ideas. Put the areas of your life. You need some crazy ideas. Put that in the comments. Whatever it is, you need some crazy ideas. Crazy ideas. Put it, whatever it is. Father, I pray right now for every person responding. You need some crazy ideas. And I pray, God, that you do that. If you did it for that woman in 2 Kings chapter 4, you're the same God that can do it for us. You don't respect your persons. You respect your principles. You're the same God. You're the same God. You're the same God. And we believe that as we're stepping into the spring feast, that it's about to be some crazy ideas that are downloaded into our mind, downloaded into our life. God, send somebody with a crazy idea. Send somebody to suggest something that when we first hear, we're like, like that's crazy, but it's going to work. That's crazy, but it's going to produce results. That's crazy, but it's going to do for you what you've not been able to do for yourself. And for that, we tell you, thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, guys, listen, <clears throat> um, I want you to, um, number one, if this bless you, um, let's just put a praise to seal our time today. Put a praise in the comments. Number two, let me get you to share. And if you haven't already shared, type shared in the comments once you share. Number three, number three, uh, if this bless you, we're going to sow. And it's, you're gonna, whatever you sow, you're going to put a four in it. This is from 2 Kings chapter four. Four is the biblical number of creativity. Crazy. You need a crazy idea. You, you literally do. And one crazy idea could change your entire life. I, am, I, I could give you story after story in my own life of how something crazy ended up producing crazy results that blew my mind. You don't need a regular idea. Look at me. I just heard you look. You don't need a safe idea either. Some of you all play it too safe. And when you play it too safe, you never take any territory. You don't need a safe idea. You don't need a rational idea. You don't need a reasonable idea. You need a crazy idea. You need a two million people coming out of Egypt overnight idea. You, you need a walking on water idea. <laughs> you need a two fish, five loaves of bread idea. You need to go borrow somebody's jars and then charge them for the oil in their jar idea. You need a grab his clothes and you're going to be healed idea. That's crazy. Well, that doesn't even make sense. Come on, guys. Come on. That's crazy. If you touch his clothes, you're going to be healed. Imagine if she told a friend that. Babe, what you gonna do today? Girl, you know how ladies be talking to one another. Girl, I'm gonna go down now and and uh and I'm gonna uh I'm gonna this, this is a man, his name is Yeshua. That's his Hebrew name. And I'm I'm gonna I'm just gonna grab the hem of his garment. I believe I'm gonna be made whole. Oh, that's what you're doing. 
Yeah, she crazy. <laughs> Fellas, think I talk to her. Man, what you gonna do today? Man, what you gonna do today? Man, I've been sitting by this pool for 38 years, man. I'm just gonna, you know, just chill out today. It's a chill day. We just wanna be by this pool, you know? And, uh, you know, today might be the day something changes for me. Today might be the day something gets better. Come on. That's crazy. Oh, I'm going to start hollering. Oh, what you going to do today? They told me your shoe was passing by today. When he walks by me, I'm going to start hollering. And when I start hollering, I think he's just going to heal me. Ain't you been blind for a long time? Yep. Uh, how are you even going to know he's coming? I will hear the crowd. I just... Come on, y'all. That's crazy. Our friend can't get in here to get healed. So tear the roof off. <laughs> the roof, the roof, the roof is on fire. Tear the roof off. Come on, y'all. If you're getting it, just type crazy in the comments. Tear the roof off. That's what I'm doing. That's what we're going to do. We're going to tear the roof off this junk. Junk is a Southern word, which means thing. <laughs> we're going to tear the roof off this junk. Take it off. Well, what are you going to do then? Then we're going to lower them in there. That's crazy. That's crazy. Y'all, that's crazy. Okay, last one. David. David, what you going to do? I'm going to go defeat Goliath. With what? With all the armor and sword and stuff? Nope. With a slingshot. I got it at Toys R Us the other day. <laughs> what? Oh, I went to the Bass Fish Pro Shop and got a, got a slingshot. That's got yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna take down this huge 12 plus foot giant. Yeah, I'm gonna do that with a slingshot. Yeah. That's imagine what his friends are thinking, like, oh, that's what you're doing, Dave. Mm -hmm. Okay, you crazy. You crazy. You're crazy. You're crazy until you get crazy results. Prophesy this over your life. Crazy results are coming to me. Prophesy that. Crazy results are coming to me. All right, we're going to sow. Whatever you sow, you're going to put a four in it, guys, because four is the king, second king, chapter four we're in, and four is the biblical number of creativity. How can you sow? You can use the cash app. Dollar sign, Bishop Form with the number two. PayPal, Vidmo, Zelle, Givelify, that's available. Um, the email is hello at Harvest Church of Church. Maybe you do 24, 14, 34, 40, 54, 104, 1,004, 4,000, 44,000, 45. Whatever you sow, put a four in it. And so at the level... But you want to see things happen. I so big because I want to see big. That's just me. You can, you know, that's just me. I so big, I want to see big. Uh, that's just me. I so big, I want to see big. But whatever you do, put a four in it. And here it is. We're sticking with this thing. Crazy. Just so y'all know, uh, we're doing a whole series uh, called <laughs> Let's Go Crazy this year. Uh, and I had them I had them to build a series image off <laughs> off of this graphic I saw from the print song years and years ago. So we're doing that. All right. Of course, you can sew. I tried. Of course, you can sew on Monday. All right. Dollar sign, Bishop Home with the number two. Um, PayPal, Ben Moselle, give the five. That's available. Email us at lordharvardchurch.church. Let's go crazy. <laughs> You're going to put a four in it. You're going to put a four in it. Yes. Put the prayer in right now. Put the prayer in right now. Whatever your prayer request. If you got a prayer request, guys, drop it in the comments right now. I'll come back and give you the giving message in just a moment. But in addition to that, uh, if you're on here watching, you need to become a Christian, recommit yourself to the Lord, or be sure. I just spent 52 minutes pouring into you. Guys, if you're already saved, you're already a Christian, I need you to just give me 60 seconds. Pray for for somebody else. Scales fall off of their eyes, scales fall off of their ears, and they come to the Lord today. If you need to become a Christian, recommit yourself to the Lord, or be sure, wherever you're at, on the count of three, do the hand wave emoji, or say it's to me right now, right now, right now. I love it right now. Do the hand wave emoji say it's me. One, two, three. If you need to become a Christian, recommit yourself to the Lord or be sure. R. Barnett, at the name of the seat, we're just going to call it crazy. We're just going to call it crazy. Crazy. Or you can be more specific. Crazy ideas. Crazy or crazy ideas. That's this seat today. Crazy or crazy ideas. Me, I see you. Me, I see you. We've got three things happening right now. If you're praying, you're doing the prayer hands or prayer emoji. If you need to become a Christian, recommit yourself to the Lord or be sure you're doing the hand wave emoji say it's me. There's two. And then for those of you, for those of you that have prayer requests, you're dropping those in the comments right now. To be paid the 30,000 you're owed this week, I pray God for a release of what's owed. I pray for a release of what's owed. There's three. Wherever you're at, you need to become a Christian, recommit yourself to the Lord, or be sure. There's four. You do the hand wave emoji, say it's me. You got a prayer request, you're dropping it. There's five. I see you over on YouTube. And pray healing to that stomach pain. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, wherever you're at, 
in Jesus' name. You submitted a praise report this morning. Praise God. Uh-oh, hold on. I got to see that. Where do you send the seat? You can use Cash App. Dollar sign, Bishop Foreman with the number two. Can somebody respond to that? PayPal, Venmo, Zelle, Givelify. That's available. Email us at lordharvestchurch.church. I'm going to come back and give you the giving message too. But I see the questions coming in. I pray over every single prayer request. I become that they. I pray that they become praise reports. I pray that they become praise reports. Let me tell you why that's my prayer. Because I'm going to read. I'm going to read you a praise report in a second. But let's get these decisions in. If you need to become a Christian, recommit yourself to the Lord, or be sure. I need you to do the hand wave emoji or say it's me wherever you're at. If you haven't already done it, I'm going to count down from ten. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Two, one. You can keep responding, but we're going to pray. I, I've seen five. You can keep responding. For those of you that are like, I'll wait. I'll do it later. Tomorrow's not promised. Do something crazy and do it now. Do something crazy and do it now. How can you sew? Cash app, dollar sign, bishop form with the number two. PayPal. Can I get somebody to respond to that? PayPal, Venmo, Zell, Givelify. The email is hello at harvestchurch.church. Everybody pray this prayer with me. Say, Father, thank you for dying in my place. Thank you for your love for me. I confess with my mouth. And I believe in my heart, there are six, I see you, Nicole, on Facebook, that you are my Lord and my Savior. Give me the grace to be a faithful Christian from this day forward. If I fall or if I fail, give me the grace to get back up again. Today is the beginning of the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Listen, guys, you just prayed that prayer. Um, I want you to text Harvest to 55498. Text Harvest to 55498. And you enter the option for salvation. Why should you do that? Let me walk you through what to do next now that you've given your life to the Lord. Some of you are saved, but you need a shepherd. You can be connected to Harvest Church. We're hybrid church in buildings and online. So you don't have to be in Denver or Atlanta. You can be anywhere across America, around the world, be a part of the family. The Bible says that God gives you a shepherd, a voice that he connects you to. This thing is spiritual. So we never have to meet. You have to touch me. You have to talk to me. This thing is spiritual. And a spiritual connection can be much stronger in distance than a physical connection that's in person. Okay? So all you got to do, again, you text Harvest to 55498, and you can enter the option for join HC and be a part of the family. I see a question, Kimberly, over on YouTube. I can't find you on Cash App. Cash App's been buggy a little bit lately for some people, but it's dollar sign, Bishop Form with the number two. It's there. For some reason, it won't let you do it. There's tons of other ways you can do it. You can do a PayPal, Venmo, Zelle, Givelify. You can do it that way. And then, Kimberly, I see your second question. You can also mail it in, too. All of that is at harvestchurch.church. Harvest Church, such as there's tons of ways to give that way. Guys, we apologize for the issue with Cash App. There's nothing. We've brought the issue to them. For some people, it works just fine. For some people, it, it doesn't. So we don't know why. But just make sure you're doing the dollar sign. This is form of the number two, and it should be right there. All right. Let me read you this praise report. Again, what are we sowing? Anything with a four in it. Anything with a four in it today. 24, 34, 104, 54. Uh, double it. You know, 88, whatever. Put a four in it, and you're going to call it crazy ideas. How do you make the anointing oil? Um, it's crazy that, that it doesn't show cash out. I, I, again, we apologize. I don't know. For some people, it works just fine. For some, it's not showing. I don't know why. Um, how do you make the anointing go? I would encourage you to order it, making it so it needs to be prayed over. It needs to be prayed over. There's a whole process of that. I have a message called the anointing oil that walks you through that. Um, you can get it on our app or our website, and that'll walk you through that. But I would order it. You can order that. And we'll we'll ship it to you, okay? Um, but listen, let me read you this quick praise report. Um, why? Here's why when I pray, I say, uh, let those prayer requests be turned into praise reports. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Now, I heard that a new one just came in, but um, before I read that one, um, before, I haven't seen that one yet. Let me read you this one. Wednesday night marked two months of me not being able to attend the Wednesday night experience due to a work schedule, which left me pretty empty. I've been going through quite a bit at work and in my home personal life, but God decided that I need to make some sudden fast forward movement. Once this began to happen, things really got tough. I explained to Bishop my situation. I asked him about my plans to move to Atlanta as it was heavy on my heart to do. I also let him know I had an interview for an Atlanta job the very next day. This would have been Thursday at 1030 a.m. He said I needed to submit, give it to God. My, then uh, it says, my bishop asked me for a praise report. Literally, what I'll say to people, I said, bring me a praise report. Here it is in all caps. Sir, I got the job. It's the same company I work for in Denver, but I'll be in Atlanta. It's time for some sudden fast forward movement. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So for every person that had a praise or excuse me, a prayer request, and this is why I pray that it become a praise report because you're about to bring a praise report. All right. OK, guys, any quick questions I can answer? Uh, I literally have, um, uh, we've been almost an hour today, but I, I, to be honest, I love spending this time 
Uh oh, are we out? Uh oh, did it already cut out on the website? Oh no, it already cut out on the website. Oops. Okay, we gotta go. It cut out on the website because we only put it in for an hour and I went a little over an hour. Oops, 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 oops. Uh, so it cut out on the website. But any quick questions that I can answer for you? Any quick questions I can answer for you while we're on here today? Um, amen. Any quick questions that I can answer for you real quick while we're on? Me too. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. The, to be honest, the pouring part of what I do is the most enjoyable part of what I do. Couldn't get on your Bible. What is the website? On your Bible. So just harvestchurch.church. Harvestchurch.church. Or you text harvest to 5549. Will you be live tomorrow? Yes. Guys, church all day tomorrow. Tomorrow's message is going to be so good. And our series is called Speak Lord. I almost forgot. That's 915, 1115, 115, 4, and 7. All of that is online tomorrow. And then, uh, of course, if you're in Denver, you can be in person, 3590 Grape Street in Denver at 915. And then if you're also, if you're in Atlanta, again, I want you to get connected because I'll be, I have an update for you very soon. That's all I can say at this point is I have an update for you very soon. God's doing some amazing things behind the scenes. Uh, when we'll be able to do our Atlanta Sunday services. And so you just take service to 55498, get connected to that. All right. Can I get the address to send some merchandise when I get it printed? Absolutely. Just go right to Harvest Church. That church is the address right on there. It's the address right on there. All right. Halisa says you got the finance book yesterday. Awesome. Read that thing. It's good. Exodus 14, 14. Um, I, I won't go into to that. Let me see. If it's a quick scripture, I can give you a quick answer if, if it's going to require something. Okay. Oh, the Lord will fight for you. You only need to be still. Right. That just means sometimes you're only, sometimes you need faith to do nothing. That's what that means. Can't find me on Cash App. Again, as I mentioned, for some people, it, it works just fine. For some people, it's not. So if you can't, if you can't find dollar sign, Bishop Holmes, number two, no problem. Just go to harvestchurch.church and use one of the other giving methods. We got tons. Apple Pay. If you want to use Apple Pay, that's all. You can do that through the website. Zelle, PayPal, Venmo, Zelle, Gilify, all of that. You figured it out on the app? Awesome. Praise God. How do you get in contact for a speaking engagement? Really simple. You do that right through the app or the website too. Just click the Our Bishop page. Everything you need is right on there. It's really simple. Really simple. Uh, I see somebody saying you're facing eviction. And I pray that God give you a crazy idea in Jesus' name. Bring me a praise report. I won't say your name, but I want you to see I see you on YouTube. I see what you said. God's going to give you a crazy idea. All right. Okay, guys, I think I got all the questions answered that have come in. I love you guys. I pray you have an amazing day. I speak crazy ideas over your life. I'll see you for church tomorrow. It's going to be amazing. Dollar sign. <laughs> I'm answering somebody's cash app question while trying to save the time tomorrow. 9 15, 11 15, 1 15, 4 and 7. That's online tomorrow, anywhere across America, around the world. That's Mountain Time. And you can get our app, text harvest to 55498. And if you're in Denver, 9, 15 a.m. Uh, Mountain Time tomorrow. And then if you're in Atlanta, I want you to get connected um, so that you can get the updates um, for when we uh, for when we do our start our Sunday services there in Atlanta. We did 16 interest services. Over 100 people got saved. I went back and forth, 36,000 miles. The goal was to build our initial team in Atlanta. Mission accomplished. We've done that. Now we're going to be transitioning to that next phase. And there's a certain way um, we really wanted to do it. And, uh, and God is making that happen. All right. I love you guys. Have an amazing day. Shalom to you. Love you. See you TikTok. Love you all over here.